We've been talking about private schools for a lot of this morning, and I want to make sure that Labour uh, has a ready reply to this. Now, Labour has its plan, uh, 20% uh, VAT on private school fees, and it's commented recently, Labour Party has commented recently, it says, Labour will invest in delivering a brilliant state education for all our children, funded by ending tax breaks for private schools. Independent schools do not have a pass uh, do not have to pass this change on to parents. Independent schools do not have to pass on pass this on to parents, this change in this money. Well, we'll get into that in a minute or two. We'll be talking to the head of a uh, state school and um, I'm actually going to ask that particular aspect because I think it's, it's well, we'll see how realistic it is anyway. Thanks to everybody who's been in touch. We're asking the question today. Labour's plan to impose taxes on private schools has been criticised. Is Sir Keir Starmer going to be taxing aspiration when he almost certainly becomes the next Prime Minister of this country? Mark says, if posh school fees can be afforded, then so can paying more taxes. Um, Martin says, the people who've sent their children to private school have paid for the places as a state school anyway through taxation. What is the thinking behind this policy? I think I've read that out before, actually. Sorry. Um, I've been given... Uh, a piece of, uh, piece of paper that I've read out before. Uh, apologies for that. Michael says he is not planning to impose taxes on public schools, but rather remove their unjust VAT exemption. Why is this even an issue? Ah, yes, rich people losing an unjust tax break. Well, Michael, I think, I think of, as we've heard on uh, from many people, listen, this isn't always rich people. This is people, yeah, they, they, they have the money to give uh, their kids a private school education, but often they have made huge sacrifices in order to do so. Um, Steve says... If parents can't afford it, send the children to state schools and donate the fees to get the rack problem fixed. Al says this doesn't impact the super wealthy. It hurts those that struggle to give their kids the best opportunities. Those with money can afford increases. It's once again the middle and aspiring classes that get opportunities taken away. Sam says having rich parents equals aspiration. Neil says so they want you to pay money to the, to the government for not using the government's money in the first place. Uh, Paul says squeezing the middle harder. Lots of and lots of comments on this, lots of people getting in touch and we will talk to the head of a private school in just a few minutes. But first I want to talk about an equally important uh, story because free speech has been a huge issue this week. We've seen Dame Sarah Khan's report, I interviewed her a couple of days ago, 76% of people saying that they have self-censored, they haven't said certain things in their homes and workplaces in any sort of public situation, they're worried about being cancelled. Well, there's now a piece of legislation that's due to come into uh, place in Scotland, the Hate and Public Order Scotland Act. Uh, that comes into force on the 1st of April, so Monday week, criminalising threatening, it criminalises threatening or abusive behaviour which is intended to, to stir up hatred based on certain characteristics including age, disability, sexual orientation and, big shock, transgender identity. Well, let's talk to Susan Smith, she's director of Four Women Scotland. Susan, you're very welcome to the programme. Uh, what do you make of this legislation, Susan? Thank you. Well, the problem, the immediate problem is not so much the legislation, although there are many, many issues with the legislation, but the fact that the um, police service, what we can discern so far from the training the police have been given, is that it it's highly it's highly biased and it doesn't even reflect the law which is bad enough to start with and um, it's been deemed not fit for purpose by both the past and the current chair of the police federation in scotland so, so what are police officers who will of course have to slightly interpret but also enforce this law what have what have they actually been told in scotland and by police scotland or at least those who are training them and police scotland presumably spending uh, money on uh, on training to to give to these officers well um according to according to the current uh, chair of police federation they've been given a sort of online um two-hour um, training package that um, often doesn't actually represent the law. So it has the incidence of a high profile politician being called an, a rude name on the street. And this is actually a direct reference to something that happened to Patrick Harvey, who's one of the um, keenest proponents on um, He's, he's a Green Party politician, Green. isn't he? MSP, I think, uh, rather than an MP? Yeah. Uh, that's right. He's an MSP and he's the leader of the Scottish Greens. He's also a minister um, in the Scottish government. And he was one of the people who was... But very, they, they very might argue, look, this is a real world example. This is something that actually happened and this is how the law is changing and this is what you should do about it. Surely that's a reasonable example, is it not? Um, well, it's not because it doesn't really meet the threshold for a crime. Well, it doesn't meet the threshold for a crime and it doesn't 
meet the threshold I would consider for stirring up. But this is the problem that we've got this very grey area where the police aren't sure. And it's this stirring up part of the bill that's been problematic. So um, we've had hate crime for a while in Scotland and covering these protected characteristics, but it's an aggravator. So if you commit a crime and it's motivated by hate, by racism um, or by homophobia, for example, you get a harsher sentence. But what this new um, act is saying is that if you distribute material that people think is harmful or if you say things that people think are upsetting, you can also be prosecuted for this very vague crime of stirring up hatred. But, but no one has the right not to be offended, but it seems that maybe they do now with this change. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, you know, I mean, the, I, I could the, say your scarf offends me. Does that mean I? Does that mean you get arrested? By the way, it's a lovely <laughs> scarf. <laughs> well, no, because I'm only a lowly woman, and one of the things about hate crime legislation is they establish hierarchies about who is protected, who the government considers worthy, and who they don't consider worthy. So you can run around saying all sorts of nasty things about women and um, that won't meet any threshold for any crime. So, so if you, if you make really sexist remarks, if I if I uh, say something terrible about, you know, all women and belong in the kitchen or something like that, yeah. that, that would not be considered as part of this. But if I say, you know, trans women are actually men, that would be something that would perhaps would be considered as part of it. Yes, and they will say that, no, you won't be done for saying trans women are men, but we know people are reporting people already for comments like that. Um, only yesterday, or, or Monday rather, we found out that another MSP had been reported to the police for saying that a non-binary identity was as valid as claiming to be a cat. And um, he, I mean, in, in, non in fairness, there'll be lots of people who will report all sorts of things, but the police may not necessarily do something about it. But you're right, there is definite confusion here and, and a real nervousness about this, what this law is actually going to mean. That's right. And um, especially because the police have said they're going to investigate all of these complaints. So even if they investigate them and find there's nothing, nothing uh, criminal has occurred, they might still log, for example, a non-crime hate incident. And that can come up in an advanced um, uh, disclosure check. So if you're wanting to work with children or vulnerable adults, you might be told you can't do that work because the police have got a file on you based on all these um, spurious and malicious complaints. Listen, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, we'll keep a very close eye on this and we'll continue talking to Susan Smith there. She's Director for Women's Scotland.